everybody. I'm Lila. And I'm Stelios. And we are back to talk about some of the suggestions and thoughts we have about ways the SCA can change or improve to make it more welcoming to new people and more appealing for current members to stay. Yep. Uh, one of the things that we've mentioned several times throughout previous videos is that the SCA is a Eurocentric group. Now, I don't want to be waving this word around like it's a four-letter word or a scarlet letter, because the SCA is Eurocentric. And it's not a bad thing, because it wasn't done in any air of, like, maliciousness. Yeah, there was there was no malice or anything like that. If you look at the history of the SCA, it was started in the 60s in Berkeley, California as a backyard party with a theme. Mm -hmm. And that theme was, you know, they were going to, you know, reenact the lifestyle and culture of medieval Europe. Mm -hmm. And from there, just kind of toilet up. bowl and got bigger. <laughs> and celebrating your European heritage, I mean... That's not a bad thing. No. In fact, it's a good thing. Yeah. European heritage can and should be wonderful. And we're not saying that anyone in the SCA should stop doing the European stuff. What we're suggesting is stop restricting it to just European things. It's time to let the white box go. It's time to r relinquish the incredibly Eurocentric mores of this game and we're not tell like she said we're not telling y'all to put all things european down and yeah. walk away from them we're not saying that at all what we are saying is make room make room the poofy pants are great but there's other things that are cool too and if other people want to do that let them don't shame them don't try and steer them away from it don't tell them that they can't dear god don't tell them that they can't <sighs> Because first of all, in actual history, Europe wasn't in a little box. People didn't live in boxes. They traveled, they traded, they moved, they married, they, they set up routes for things. In theory, you could go from Japan to Germany on the Silk Road. Yeah. You know, so there's plenty of room for many different cultures and even cultures that didn't have any contact with Europe. The thing is, the SCA thus far has always used Europe as a base point and kind of spiderwebbed out from there. But everything that, everything that you know, people are quote allowed end quote to portray in the SCA usually has to be something that had contact with Europe in some way, shape, or form, and. I can't really jive with that. Yeah, it's... I'm going to open up the hard bucket here for a second. That's... That's kind of unacceptable. I get that it was originally based off of European history and all that, but saying in order to do it, it has to have had contact with Europe, like, that's edging into some territory that we don't want to go into as a group of people. We don't want to edge into some kind of European superiority thing. No, I don't think I don't think it was that. I think, oh no, I, I don't think it was intended to be that. But I think we should take pains to steer away from that. I think the reason why it was put in place in the first place was try to was to try to provide some degree of structure. structure. Yeah, but we don't need that anymore. How many years has the SC be around? 40, 50? Like, uh, at least 50. I think we just had 50 year recently. Yeah, they just had 50 you know, year. We don't need that structure anymore. We got it down pretty pat at this point. At this point, if someone wants to do Chinese persona, Korean, Japanese, hell, Pacific Islander, you know... Uh, the Americas. I don't see why that can't be explored. And that's not even including the vast resources of, of African personas available. Africa is freaking huge. People sometimes have this stuck in their heads that it's just this big desert full of either people who lived in jungles or people who lived on the savanna. And it's not. 
There's hundreds and thousands of, of tribes and cultures and languages and all sorts of great things. And the thing about all of that is because the world is changing and because of things like social media and the internet, we have almost all the world's knowledge at our fingertips now. A whole heck of a lot of it. We don't necessarily need a starting point based in Europe to find a way to include everybody in this game. We don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think, and we touched on this in another video, but being more open to personas that are not European is going to make the SCA a more welcoming place for people of color. Yeah. Because why, why would somebody who is not European in heritage want to come into this fantasy game to dress up and run around like a white person? That's not a, actually an idealized thing by a lot of people, believe it or not. You know, the, the thing is, you have so many people in America alone that come from so many different cultures. Mm -hmm. I think that we should stop trying to find a way to finagle our personas into believability for this game because that's something that has been a constant thing for a long time is that people have literally jumped through mental hoops to justify it to justify their persona here's the thing let's take away the default of being white instead of the default being white and you have to add all these hoops to make it acceptable to the white beginnings, let's make it okay to start somewhere not white. And by starting somewhere that's not white, we mean starting somewhere that may have not had contact with a European culture. Or not as much as you think it should have to justify this. Uh, and this is a conversation that we're, in general, as a culture, trying to start having. Why does the default need to be one way or another? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be. You know, some people just are because they are. And I think it would be more appealing to, and this is something we talked about before, people of color, if they can come into this game and they can do something that is of their heritage, something that speaks to them. Let people not just to be allowed to, but open to doing a Maasai warrior, or uh, an Aztec jaguar warrior, or any of the, the many different uh, tribes down in the, the Southern Pacific. I think that would be amazing to see the creativity that people could come up with for this. I mean, how would you do a Maasai warrior heavy kit? You'd have to be really creative to, to make it visually appealing. And I'd love to see that kind of um, creativity and, and crafting work go into it. You know that's passion. They're not just throwing some pickle barrel on, oh, it's good enough. Like, there is passion going into this. And that's one of the prime things that drives the SCA, is passion. Truth be told, it's the only thing that I think is important in the continuation mm -hmm. of this game people have to love it they have to they have to believe in it because what, what, what do they always talk about they always talk about the dream yeah and you know the dream does not exist if people don't believe in it now here's the thing the SCA population has been dwindling as of lately everybody knows it nobody wants to accept it but the it's true now, there are entire groups of people out there who have yet to be tapped. And the reason for that is because there's no appeal. Yeah. You know, when I first saw this, I kind of looked at it like, eh. Because I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. Yeah. You know, I was fortunate enough that when I went to my first event, Hunter West War 2010, that I met Sir Rodrigo. And, you know, I think we were, like, one of three black people on site. And that's from multiple kingdoms attending that event. Yeah. Yeah. And and we don't 
we don't want people to feel bad or defensive that they do European stuff. That's not the point of this. Understand you're not being attacked because that's not the point of this. No, it's not. It's it's not about it's not even about you. It's about other people being able to pursue their dream in a different way. Dreams are great, but your dream isn't everybody else's dream. That doesn't make your dream invalid. But it means you can't push that onto other people. You have to let them dream their own dream, walk their own path. And there's no reason why you can't enjoy what other people are doing as much as they can enjoy what you're doing. That's exactly right. I don't think I could have said that any better. Yeah, thanks. Well, I think that 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 should wrap up us talking about the Eurocentrism part of the SCA. And how we can expand those borders and be more accepting of people who are outside of the Eurocentric spectrum. Mm -hmm. Everything from uh, loosening heraldry rules so that non-European personas have an easier time registering names and devices, to being more accepting of people who want to do personas that not only aren't Euro-based, but maybe not have had much, if any, European contact at all, and being able to find the, the richness and culture in those, the intellectual and the artistic sharing of that. I mean, you don't have to do it to enjoy it. The entire purpose of what we're trying to do here is not to destroy anybody else's dream. Absolutely not. It is to make room for everybody else's dream. There is room for everybody's dream. 